Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, we'll be looking at making and saving an animated GIF. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, and I'm all ready to go. Now I can tell you that this document is 728 pixels wide by 90 pixels high with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch, perfect for a banner on the web. All right, now you see that I've got three layers all ready to go. I've got my background, this light gray color. Then I've got a banner and then I've got some text. Now what I want to do is have the banner fade in, stay on screen, fade out, and then the text fade in and then stay on screen and fade out again. And it's actually very, very easy. Let's turn both of these on just so we know what's going on. And to do this, I'm going to go up to Window and then Workspace and Motion. Now I've got a choice here. I can either use a video timeline or a frame animation. Now it may be that you want to use a frame animation. Maybe you're used to using tweens in Flash or something like that. For me, video is going to be much easier, so that's what I'm going to stick to. And then I'm going to click on Create Video Timeline. Now we can see that I've got my banner and my text all there, ready to go, but they're on top of one another. And that's not what we want at all. So let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. And let's take my text, just click and drag it and put it at the end. Now, over in the Layers panel, you can see that my text and my banner have gone into a video group, and that's quite helpful. Maybe not so helpful in this particular project, but in larger projects, that does become very helpful indeed. OK, now there's a couple of ways that we can get this to fade in and fade out. If you're used to using keyframes, and there's another video available if you'd like to know more, you may want to use keyframes and the opacity here. For me, let's keep it even easier than that. Let's use a transition. So you see I've got all these transitions and I'm going to use a fade. I'm going to just drop the fade on there. Now if I play that, you can see that it fades in. Lovely. Now you'll notice the quality dipped a little bit there and that is set under here. You can see the resolution is 50% during playback. That's fine, just so as I get an idea of what's going on. Let's put another fade at the end so everything fades out. Now I could put a crossfade between the two, and what this will do is it'll fade one into the other. Let's press play there, and off it goes, and it'll fade one into the other. Oh, and it just kind of jolts a little bit, and I don't really like that in this particular instance. I'm going to click on it and delete it. What I can do is go and get another transition, fade out, and fade in. And I'm about done. Let's alter the timings here. Let's bring this one down to four seconds. Maybe should have done this before the transition, shouldn't I? Let's drag that one down to four. And this one down to eight. And we are done. I've got my eight second banner, fade in, fade out. Let's run it through. Now you'll notice there's this green blue line. That's putting it into a RAM preview for us. So the first time it's a little bit more jolty, depending on your computer system. And then the second time it'll run a bit smoother. Here we go. And we're running at full speed. Excellent. Now I can tell it's running at full speed down at the bottom of the screen. You can see that this 30 frames per second is in green, meaning that there's no frames being dropped at all. But that worries me as well. 30 frames per second is a little much for a web banner. In fact, 15 frames per second is about right. But we can change that now. So I'm going to come over to the drop down menu and then go down to set timeline frame rate and change that to 15. OK. Now it looks like it shortened it down, but it actually hasn't. It's still eight seconds long. Let's just zoom in a little bit. There we go. And it's as easy as that. Let's run that through, just make sure everything's working nicely. Again, it has to make a RAM preview for us. That's all right. It's only eight seconds. We can wait that long, can't we? There we go. And up we are. We're running. Nice. Now, I could save it here, but I'm going to put a little bit of a spotlight just where the text is on there, just a spotlight that goes through. To do that, I need a new layer. So let's go down to the bottom of the Layers panel 
and new layer. And I'm going to bring that out of the video group so then it sits on its own level there and I can bring that to where I want it to be. So I want it to be just after this fade out, sorry, this fade in, and then fade out just before the out there. There we go. That's about right. Now I've got a couple of problems here. If I go and get the brush, and I've got this white brush here, if I now click down on this layer, brush, bring it in. If I click down and then I try and animate that, you can see that actually I just get the corner. And that's not what I want at all. So let's control alt to Z that a couple of times. And what I need is a little bit more canvas. So let's get the crop tool. Then using the old key, I can then transform from the center, make this nice and big and click OK on that. Now, when I do that, it's made the background layer start here as well. So let's bring that one back to where we need it to be and then back up here. There we go. And then switch up and back onto layer one, which is where I want my spotlight. Let's go and get the brush and click and then move across here. Whoop, nope, let's twirl down. Let's mark the position there and then go to the end and move that across. And you'll notice I can't see it. Let's bring that in so we can see that layer and sure enough, there it is. So let's bring the keyframe there and let's bring that across to there. Good. Right, let's see how that does. And that's okay. Let's reduce the opacity of that right down. It just wants a little bit of a hint of it. And there we go. Now what I need to do is to crop this back down again. However, when I do that, I am going to lose the brush in a similar way as to when I pushed it down and it wasn't actually on the page. But to combat that, all I have to do is put this layer as a smart object. Now it'll stay there even when I crop. So with my control or my command key pressed down, I'm going to click on my background layer and that'll make a selection of my background layer. Then go to image and crop and we're back down to the right size. Control or Command D to deselect. Now let's just make sure by running this through and there's my little flare going through there. Good. I'm happy with that. Let's play it through. And again, we're making this little RAM preview and then it should all run nice and smoothly. There we go. I'm definitely done this time. Let's go save it, shall we? To save the animated GIF, I go up to File and then Save for Web. When you open it up, it may look something like this. What I want to do is go and change JPEG to GIF. Now you may want to consider the file size depending on how big your GIF is. Mine is quite small at 95.4K. And it will take 18 seconds to load on a 56.6 kilobytes per second dial-up modem, a little bit of a throwback. If you're my age or older, you will recognize that. But of course, in today's age, that's not really relevant. All right, now there is a little bit of a drop-down menu here. You can change that should you wish. But you know what? I like having it there. It reminds me of the, the good old days. Hmm. All right, let's have a look at what else we can do here. We can tell it how often it should loop. So looping options is set to once. Let's go for forever. We can play it, make sure it's working okay as well. And it really isn't for me. I don't know why. There we go. It's working okay now. A little bit jerky, but it seems to be doing everything I want it to do. I was pretty confident it was going to work because of the way that I got it set up, but I am getting a little bit concerned now. Let's just double check. Yep, everything's working fine. Let's go back to that, save for web. And I've got my sticky settings here, so everything's as I left it, and I can play that through um, again, just to make sure that everything works, or it looks like it should be working, kinda. All right, I'm quietly confident that it is going to work. All I have to do then is press save, and save it to where I want it to be. In my case, I want it to be on my folder banner, and I'm gonna call it animated banner GIF. It's easy as that, let's click save. And there we are, we're all done. My name's Eric Reno, thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and to come and find me and the rest of the Photoshop nuts over at tipsquirrel.com. For now though, 
Bye-bye.